everybody. Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. We usually call this show Ladies Tea, but look who is with us tonight. Not only our good friend, Turning Point contributor, Aaron Elmore, but the host of Prime Time with Alex Stein on The Blaze, the pimp on the blimp himself, Alex Stein. Aaron and Alex, I got to tell you guys, I've been really jazzed up about this show for a while. So I'm stoked to have you both here. And I think we got to start by talking about the ridiculous news that was finally released to everybody in America. And it's what we all knew. We probably all posted about yeah. for so long and got censored for it. Oh, guess what? The Biden administration says the origin of COVID is probably man-made. It probably leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Uh, Alex, we all knew this. Why did they censor all of us for so long? Well, one reason they're going to say, oh, because of social justice and progressivism, we don't want to unfairly attack China. But listen, Joe Biden knew about the bio labs in Wuhan, but also there's bio labs that are very important in the Ukraine right now. So I'm just saying there's a oh. lot of things that are going on right now. And sadly, us conspiracy theorists, when we call it out, the only thing that it takes for us to be right is time. And it looks yeah. like we're batting a thousand right now. Yeah. I mean, Aaron, I think this is it's really frustrating to have had the, the stuff at the bottom of every post that you've made over the past two plus years about, you know, COVID information. Here are the facts about COVID. We all talked about this. They censored all of us for it. They're finally coming out now and talking about it. But I mean, I think for a lot of people out there, where you know, where do you give us back all of our followers? What what do we get yeah. out of this? This is this is crazy. I mean, the only thing we get out of this is sort of a little pat on the back to ourselves and a little pointing of the finger to the liberals saying, I told you so. That's literally all we get. And the shame of this is it's too little, too late. Yep. You know, the air quotes pandemic for the most part is over. We've all considered it over for a long time. But how many times did we get censored on social media? How many times did people yell at us or make fun of us or chastise us when we said, you know, this didn't come from bat soup? Right. <laughs> so we were the ones that were the butt of the jokes and being censored online and just sort of really being called tinfoil hat crazies. And guess what? We were right. I actually posted um, something on my Instagram story to say, you know how DJ Khaled, he's like, another one. And I posted, <laughs> I posted like, oh, another one. We can put this one, you know, on our side because we were right yet again. Yeah. And by the way, Alex, I think you're right. All it takes for things to no longer be like conspiracy theories, but actually be facts. What do they say? It's like six months six or months. so. It's like, this is actually, uh, at what point I wonder, do people actually wake up who haven't seen what we have all seen, who, who still believe all the nonsense out there being spewed out by the mainstream media? I mean, at some point it does make you stop and think, what are the goals here? What what do we think? Does anything happen to Fauci? Because he he <sighs> was the main driver, I feel like, of all of this going forward. Heck, he told us so many times that he believed that this came from animals, that this there's no way that this was a man-made virus. I don't know. Do you think anything's going to happen to him? Yeah. Laura, no, I don't want to answer this. Sorry, sorry to cut in, but Laura, uh, we got to look at Dr. Fauci's record in the 80s when he would give a backstock mm. cancer drug called AZT. And mm. if you look up, if you you look up these photos and just look at the gay community and type in Fauci, there was people literally holding up signs to stop killing, you know, my brothers, my sisters, because they actually felt like Fauci was killing people in the 80s by wow. misprescribing this drug. And if you look into it now, they're saying that Dr. Fauci received over over four hundred million dollars. I mean, and now this. This is just conspiracy. This has not been proven. But for give me, it six months. Yeah, right. give it six months. But for me, it's like, do, do, do I get any justice out of, you know, making Fauci go to jail for the rest of his life? Not necessarily, but should he? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but, but we're never going to get back what they took from us. That's the problem. Right. Is that time is so important. Those two years, all those kids that were in school that had to go learn at home and didn't learn anything, their whole entire maturation in life is stunted. And now a lot of kids, at the, I, I believe, here in Dallas, I don't know if you knew this, Laura, but I'm running for school board at Highland Park Independent School District. Yes. Because, but listen to this. The sixth graders were reading at a first grade level oh on my all God. standardized test scores. So this two years, yes, we can get, you know, whatever we can open up and things can seem like they're okay again. But those two years, those poor kids that lost their senior year of football or didn't learn their fifth grade math and now their whole life is going to be a lot more challenging. That's where I'm frustrated for the wasted time. 
Yeah. What was it? I think it's in Baltimore public schools that it zero percent of of Chicago. Kids that was, Chicago. Is it Chicago? Yeah. They're, they're, I'm sure it's every major state. Zero are proficient in math or yes. reading. There was multiple schools where zero students were proficient in math or reading. I mean, that's. I mean, that's. It doesn't even seem real. It has to. To me, if you get to this point, and you have zero percent proficiency in the basics, does it not seem intentional at some yes. point? Does it not yeah. seem like there is a goal at hand here to? I mean, you talk about stunting their maturation, stunting their future. These people aren't going to know how to do anything. This is an entire generation of people. I don't know, Aaron. To me, it feels purposeful at a certain point. And is it just that down the line they want these people to be dependent on who? The government? I mean, yeah. is that the goal here? I, I unfortunately do believe that that is the goal. I, I think they want everyone to be less intelligent, less aware, less able to fight yeah. for themselves, less able to really be a productive member of society. Because when, And that's why they're taking families away. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have a family, if you don't have religion, if you don't have God, if you don't sort of have this nucleus in your life, and if you don't have intelligence, you're going to need the government. And it becomes a lot easier. This is basically socialism 101. You know, it's their playbook. First you do this. It's literally part of their playbook because if you don't have your family, you don't have God and you don't have an education, the government slides right in and they yeah. have you for the rest of your life. And it's I really mean, sad because these are innocent children that are being used as pawns. Mm -hmm. And we already know that the school boards and, you know, Democrat party, they're basically one in the same. And that's why they're so against school choice. And again, very, very calculated. And we really do deserve better and our kids deserve better because we want public education, AKA government education, AKA taxpayer funded education to work for the taxpayer. I mean, that's the least they could do. I was gonna say, and nobody wants to work anymore. I mean, that's the truth. It's just everybody wants something for free and doesn't want to do the job. Uh, and then that kind of brought me to our current president, Joe Biden, who <laughs> also doesn't want to do his job. Don't forget, instead of going to Ohio where the train derailed about a week ago, Joe Biden instead flew the 10 hours over to Ukraine instead of like the hour flight from D.C. to Ohio. But guess who actually did go see the people of East Palestine, Ohio? Donald J. Trump. He actually did the job that Joe Biden was supposed to do. He brought 14,000 bottles of water. I believe they were Trump water, by the way, if you haven't tried it. Mwah. Bad. This stuff there. He went by a McDonald's. I and I saw somewhere they they put out his order. Uh, my father, oh, this is true. Whoever reported this, Big Macs, fillet of fish, and chocolate milkshake. If you get on the plane with him, and there's been a McDonald's run, um, those are pretty much your options. There's some fries as well, but it's either yeah. a Big Mac or fillet of fish. Um, but I'm happy to see Alex that someone paid attention, and that someone, of course was my father-in-law. So shout out to him. Not so much to Joe Biden. Yeah. And, and I believe right after uh, President Trump left, you know, I think that, or excuse me, right when he got there is that's when FEMA said that they're going to actually start doing mm, something about it. And right. now Joe Biden says, finally, they're going to go, you know, knock on doors. But listen, this is the problem is the federal government, because of those, because of those voters, or Trump fans, you just saw the way that they acted in that McDonald's. It, you know, they were so happy to see him. You know, they actually felt some sort of comfort, even though they had a terrible disaster happen, even though they, you know, basically can't even drink the water when they saw President Trump there, they felt so good. So that's what we need is that comforting presidential nature. Yeah. But we, you you know this, I know this, Joe Biden isn't there. I mean, he might be the president, but he's not running, he's not calling the shots. He couldn't even run a Starbucks, much less the United States of America. Yeah, oh, well, the Starbucks would be absolutely too much for <laughs> Out me. Out of business, okay? yeah, yeah I no way. what happens in there. He couldn't make a, forget it, just a regular drip coffee at this point. <laughs> forget a latte or something. Um, no you know what? I think, Alex, you're right. I think that all the people there wanted was for somebody to say, we see you, we're going to take care of you, we're going to make sure that everything is done right here, and we care about you. And Aaron, it felt like that the Biden administration, so to speak, gave them a bit of a middle finger. Nobody even talked about going to East Palestine, Ohio, until Donald Trump announced he was going to take the trip there. Then Buttigieg, the transportation secretary, uh, and you kind of have to laugh at that because what is this guy doing in that position, <laughs> uh, decided he was going to go there. Why hasn't Joe Biden gone, though? Why hasn't he taken the trip to Ohio to the people he is supposed to be working for who are depending on somebody to come there and help them?
Well, first of all, he still hasn't been there. And this yeah. past weekend, he went back to his Delaware vacation home. Now, granted, I'm sure he needs his doctors there giving him the special IVs to give him memory power. But <laughs> he still hasn't been there. And as you said, giant middle finger to the yeah. people of East Palestine, Ohio. They deserve a president that shows up and says, I'm going to do everything in my power to help you. But I do believe that just like they said on The View... Joe Biden believes these are Trump voters and they're irredeemable, deplorable, and they deserve this. And that comment on The View, yes, there was an audible gasp when Joy Behar said that, but I do believe so many Democrats really believe this. They're forgetting that these are humans and people and everyone deserves respect. And our president just thinks he's above everything. It doesn't matter. And there was another time after Hunter was just in the news for doing one of his terrible things. Mm. They had him on Air Force One the next day. And that's another huge middle finger to the American people. We shouldn't live in a country with a monarchy. Our leaders should be accountable for their actions. And right now in Washington, it just doesn't feel that that's what's happening. No, I mean, it's... Definitely. Well, I, I, so, so I just want to cut off. It's, this is the problem with the administration. They have no empathy. I mean, no. literally, like people are struggling in East Palestine, in Ohio, and you you said it best. I mean, Joe Biden is on a 10 hour flight to the Ukraine. So that's the problem is they're not actually able to show that empathy, unlike President Trump, who is very empathetic to the people there. So it's that lack of empathy for me that really at least fake it. And they don't yeah. even fake like they care about. Did you, other people. Oh, did you see the video that Don Jr. posted today of Zelensky? before he was the president. Um, he was wearing high heels and a leotard and he was doing like a his dance, dance video. Routine. I was like- yeah. He played the piano with his wiener on America on Ukrainian's Got Talent. I mean, I mean Wait, what? everybody's seen that. You haven't seen that video? Oh my I don't gosh, think a video. I need to. Yes, on Ukrainian's Got Talent, it's blocked up. He's playing a, uh, the piano with his genitals and he's with a oh. partner. It's a very famous video. I mean, he's a comedian. That just shows you how serious this is. And that's another thing we could sit here and talk about Ukraine all day. But even quid pro quo Joe talked about how he got out the last president of the Ukraine because he wasn't yep. playing ball or they were going to quote unquote investigate him. So listen, we know it's a corrupt place. And all that money is being laundered and somehow it's going back to the Biden administration, similar to how all of the money raised for the Black Lives Matter movement during the George Floyd the Summer of Love. Somehow all that money either went to Patrice Cullors, who bought, you know, six million dollars worth of mansions, or somehow maybe it was, quote unquote, this is conspiracy, laundered back into the Biden campaign. So it's just weird. All this money. And who does it actually help? A hundred and thirteen billion is what I heard last. A hundred and thirteen billion. At least show us where it's going. Like pull out the little receipt and say, this many missiles, this many guns. And when he was over there, he said, We're gonna put money back in your pockets to the Ukrainian people. Wow. Why are we putting put money, money in America's pockets? Sorry, I'm yelling, but I mean what? It's just that simple. Help America's for help Americans first. Sorry, Aaron. Well, he's supposed okay, to be the president of the United States of America. But don't worry about it, guys, because we got everything under control. We got F-22 fighter jets taking down hobbyist balloons at $400,000 a pop for the Sidewinder missiles. We're all taken care of over here in America. So Joe Biden's got it all worked out for us. Don't worry about anything. Alex, you bring up empathy. And, you know, I can't help but think of not just empathy for people in Ohio who are dealing with the aftermath of this train accident, but how about empathy for the American people who have dealt with 40-year high inflation and, and sky-high gas prices now since Joe Biden became president? I mean, there is it doesn't feel like there's anything done on behalf of the Biden administration to make any movement in the right direction on that front. They're just, they. it, it feels like on every possible front, they don't care. They don't care about people in Ohio because they didn't vote for Joe Biden. They quite frankly don't care about Americans because they're doing nothing about inflation or gas prices. They got our border wide open and they're more concerned with taking the trip over to Ukraine, as we just talked about, than anything else. It's really kind of depressing. Um, but I think this is why people are like, we got to get to 2024 and we got to get these people out of here as soon as possible. Um, I got to ask both of you, did you guys watch Breaking Bad? I feel like, Aaron, maybe we talked about this before. No, I don't watch Breaking Bad. I never watched yeah, it. Yeah, I've seen every episode. Okay, what, so what, what did, analogy. You, did you love Breaking Bad, by the way, Alex? Of course, yeah. I Walter loved it. White's one of the greatest shows of all well, time. And I, yeah. loved, I loved Brian Cranston. I talked about this before. 
um, on this show. But it's so depressing because I feel like what always happens is you start watching a show and then I'll I'll be interested in like who the actors are yes. and I'll check them out. And then I am so depressed because they're all these crazy woke liberals. Yes. Brian Cranston, no different. I made that mistake. And he highly, highly dislikes, I'm sure all of us sitting yeah. here talking today. But recently, he tried to say that the Make America Great Again slogan was racist because when was it ever great for the African-American is what he said. Here's my thing with all that. First of all, I'm depressed, Alex, that that Brian Cranston is a, a woke liberal, but I guess no surprise there. But to then take a slogan like Make America Great Again, which we all know means bring America back to the greatness where we had manufacturing, where jobs were plentiful, where people were actually able to get by and achieve the American dream. Of course, he's got to look at that as though Donald Trump wants to harken back to what? Slavery? I'm just so sick of everybody conflating everything and just making up whatever is most convenient for them, which I, I assume is what happened here with Brian Cranston. Well, yeah, I mean, I believe that he's being a fake social justice warrior, but let me just set the record straight, and you know this, Aaron knows this, and all the celebrities in Hollywood know this. It was only about 2014 when every single rapper loved Donald Trump. As yes. a matter of fact, they put Trump in every single rap song. Every single, it didn't matter if they were black, white, everybody wanted to be on The Apprentice. That was the number one. I show was on it! Yeah, just, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just saying, and, and, and Mark Burnett, who produced that show, is literally the biggest television producer in Hollywood. I mean, I know it's reality TV, but I'm just saying, so Donald Trump was beloved by Hollywood. Beloved. That's all fake outrage, all because it's identity politics, because they turned Donald Trump into a boogeyman. When they know, that's what makes it so mad when they say Donald Trump is racist. First of all, he has very close black friends that he's had with this forever since he's ever been a, a celebrity. So we know that that is provably false. So for me, when I see a guy like Brian Cranston, this is just him pontificating yeah. and just playing. He doesn't really care. But then but we got to bring up one celebrity that was good. Woody Harrelson spoke oh. out. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, so, so this is the thing is Woody Harrelson probably is a still guy that's like anti quote unquote anti Trump, but really and truly they they would like Trump. If it was 2014, all these people would be in a Pizza Hut commercial with Donald Trump right now <laughs> in two seconds. Right? All Remember cool. he was in Zoolander. Yeah, oh, Donald. Yeah. I mean, yep. come on, Donald Trump is and a celebrity icon. Everybody got an NAACP award, I believe. That's right. As well. Yes. That's exactly and I right. And I also heard that he works with Jesse Jackson to help finance his um, run for president. I think that's probably accurate as well. Yeah. So I, I, can't, a lot of I can't say 100 percent, but I think that's right. Yeah. He's done a lot to advance, the, you know, communities of color. Well, so here's my thing is I, I love that. I love that you brought up Woody Harrelson, Alex, because I kind of feel like Aaron, I don't know. Do you feel like we have we're kind of at a point now where celebrities are maybe being a little bit braver to come out with their actual feelings and thoughts on things. I almost feel like we're at a place where maybe it's going to start to swing back. And as we know, all sitting here, the cool thing is to be a conservative and to yeah. believe in America mm -hmm. first and to believe in freedom and all of those things. But I don't know. I'm kind of getting the vibe because people are just getting sick of all the craziness. And at some point, it doesn't make sense to people anymore. And I feel like maybe maybe we'll get a few more celebrities to come out. What do you think? I think Zachary, Zachary Levi is one of them that's sort of teetering on that. He's made some vaccine comments. But I do find it super interesting that the conservatives like us and then these like super hippy dippy anti-vax milk is bad, vegan is good people kind of agree with us because they were very anti-vax. Mm -hmm. So there's this strange coalition of people that normally wouldn't have a lot in common. And I do think as much as I want to claim Woody for one of us, I think he's this sort of pot smoking, hippie Probably. kind of guy. Yeah. And he's kind of an anti-vaxxer. So that's why he's saying all of these things. So, but you know what? I still say small victories. So yeah. if we can start changing hearts and minds with one issue at a time, I'll take it. Isn't Russell Brand one of those two? Yeah. I think so, because he's doing something with Rumble, isn't he? I Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I just know that people send me his stuff all the time, like his videos, and he's very just like freedom-oriented, and he's yeah. anti-forced vaccine and all of that. 
So I don't know. Like, let's let's see what happens with it all. I'm I'm here for it. Whatever it is, I think people should just come out and say it. You shouldn't be afraid to voice your opinion. Um, but they'll lose everything. Like yeah. they'll lose. They'll lose if they. You know, hey, I'm about to get this big franchise of a movie, or my show's about to go into syndication. It could be hundreds, yeah, of that's millions true. of dollars. So it's sort of like in a way that they are beholden to this ideology because if they deviate, they know that they'll be canceled and their career will be over. Well, or, or they could just go to the blaze like uh, primetime Alex <laughs> Stein and they could, they they could get say it whatever in. they want. How is the show going, Alex? It's going great, Laura. I got to get you on there. You know, we're in our yeah. fourth week, so we're on the grind all the time. I love the people at the blaze. They're definitely pro free speech. So I got no complaints. So if you guys want to support me, please, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're live. We'll be adding Monday probably in the next month or two, but uh, come on and watch, you. please. Oh, no. We, I, I, look, I love all your stuff. I think you're amazing. Um, something that I think is is sort of shocking but not surprising, I read this story about a man who spent 250,000 pounds, so I think that's more in dollars, to look like a Korean woman, but he then decided, wait a minute, this isn't for me, so he's detransitioning not only from being a woman to a man, but being a Korean woman to a white man again. So this is a whole situation. Um, but, you know, for me, so many times you hear these stories and I feel like I know we've, we talk about this a lot, but I don't think it can be discussed too much because I have kids. Aaron has a kid. Alex, I'm sure you're going to have cats. kids someday. Have You've cats. got cats. Yes. And you know, cats will trans? have some kids. Yes. Well, I, oh, that's one thing I want to say too, Laura. I have to get mad at you. You said this is not a ladies' podcast. First of all, I'm Alexandria Stein. I'm gender fluid, so this is still a ladies' <laughs> panel. I want that known right now. So I don't want any bigotry or racism. This is an all yeah. ladies' panel. So don't, don't question, question it. it. Don't, don't question, question it. it. Just go no. with it. But but but, but that's the other thing is these teachers they are convincing kids now where they're you know the, we're talking about the young kids we talked about earlier. But now these kids are being indoctrinated by their teacher to have some sort of gender ideology or to be non-binary. That's where it's really scary is the war on little kids. If you're an adult and you want to be transgender, yeah. go ahead. That's totally fine with me. But I don't really like the attack on children that are making decisions that they can't drive a car, they can't smoke cigarettes, they can't get a tattoo. I think a double mastectomy should be illegal for a 16-year-old. Well, and then you have people like a, a woman who works at a school. Um, I, I forget where this was, but she is petitioning that you don't have to, that there should be nothing transferred to the parent. Like the parent should never know. There can be secrets between the teacher and the student. They don't have to tell the parent if the, the kid changes their um, you know, pronouns in school, they want to change their name, whatever it is, you keep it totally secret from the parents. I think that is a real slippery slope. Slope. Uh, 2021, there were 42,000 kids in America who were diagnosed with gender dysphoria, and that number tripled from 2017, Aaron. So clearly, this is not just a natural increase of, of you know, people thinking, at least kids thinking, that they are in the wrong body, the wrong gender, whatever it is, there is something that is pushing them to do it. And uh, as a parent, it is incredibly scary that there are teachers out there, people that work at schools, who would ever keep a secret from me if one of my kids decided to be called by a different pronoun or a different name. Well, a couple of things. First of all, this is big business. So these hospitals are making $40,000, $50,000, $60,000 a surgery doing this. So these hospitals love this yeah it's a big huge industry and i believe that TikTok, you know the chinese communist party spying mm. tool they don't have it oh i don't i mean i have an account but my and my son even says i'm not allowed to have TikTok because it's the chinese communist party spying yeah tool. he's right it is. Mm. and the algorithm in china for their version of TikTok shows math problems and science competitions and you're only allowed to be on it for an hour a day here you see all these young girls walking around like zombies doing these dances and you're like, this is what they want for our children. Yeah. This has been a design and a plan. And pushing the trans agenda here is a big part of that. Let's confuse these children. And being an adolescent and going through puberty is confusing enough. Oh. And they say kids that have confusion about gender, I believe it was 75 to 80% correct naturally. And mm -hmm. now these young people are taking puberty blockers and having all of these irreversible surgeries. And then they wake up one day and say, wow, they really have buyer's remorse. And I just think we have to teach our children and that's why parents are so important. And that's why I say this all the time, the days of passive parenting 
are over. They're over. Yeah. You can't just turn on the TV because I was watching a show with my son on vacation and RuPaul was in it. RuPaul. And the show was called Amphibia, which an amphibian can change genders. So <laughs> I, I was kind of mind blown by that. I was like, what? So we can't, we have to read the books that they're reading. We have to watch the shows that we're watching. We have to see what's on their iPad. We got to see what's on YouTube. My son saw a quiz on YouTube, which I've now removed from his iPad that said, are you gay? And he said, mom, I took the test to see if I was gay. Oh my gosh. He goes, I'm not. I said, I'm aware of that. Thank you. But you're not allowed on YouTube anymore. It's really like, there's so much out there. Actually, you're right. Um, There was some woman, she's a doctor in Finland. She's Finland's top transgender Mm -hmm. treatment expert. She actually works at a gender clinic. And she, what you're saying, Aaron, is right. Four out of five kids who question their gender actually grow out of it. But what we can't have is these kids who are mutilated or somehow have have changed their body in such a way, their body chemistry, their hormones and all of it, that they can never be normal again. They can never go back to being just a kid or growing up in any normal way because they have they've really damaged themselves in some way. And. I think for me, that's the really upsetting part of all of this. Um, sorry, Alex, were you going to say something? No, no, you nailed it. I was just going to say that doctor got canceled for speaking out against the narrative yeah. that this is usually a phase. So uh, that's, that's you, you nailed it. You said exactly what I was going to say, Laura. Yeah, yeah I mean, put money in their pockets. Yeah, yeah, that's probably and, and right. Aaron, you said it too with the, with the hospital. They they diagnosed these people with gender dysphoria, and now they have a lifelong patient. So it's very lucrative that's for the true. hospitals. That's true. They have to continue you know, taking the hormones and doing all of it and forever, it's it's actually... And if, by the way, if you read about what it entails to go through the lower, the bottom surgery, it's not a panacea. You don't flip oh. a switch and become a man. Mm. Male and female parts that you're born with have specific functions, to put it mildly. And those functions can't be created by a pill or a surgery. Yeah, Aaron, I mean, Aaron, it's literally an open wound that has to be dilated. That's not I the female know. anatomy. I mean, I mean, I'm not trying to be gross, but this is the thing. It's so easy to find a woman. A woman has a uterus, can have a baby. It's that simple. But the left can't even, you know, they'll say a trans. If you Google, can a man get pregnant? It'll say yes. So that's that's the reality we live in. It's the upside down. world. Like imagine, imagine even 10 years ago thinking that this is where we would be. And this is the kind of stuff that we'd be discussing but it's happening now. And and look, uh, I think, Aaron, you said it. Maybe, Alex, you said it too. I really don't care. If no. you are an adult and this is what yeah. you want to do, I am all for live and let live. You go do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. But what I don't like is the drive that to towards kids on this and the push that kids should be doing this sort of thing or even considering it. It is it is really frightening, and, and I think it's really gotten out of control. Um, not to change subjects, but I do have to get your take on this, both of you. I, My husband and I did a very needed, very unusual weekend trip, just the two of us this weekend. My mom came and stayed with the kids. Shout out to my mom. Uh-uh. Um, but Eric and I tend to get in arguments about what time we need to leave to get to the airport. And here's my thing. The way I like to get down, and I would love to hear from both of you on this. My perfect scenario is I get to the airport, I go through security, I approach my gate, and they're calling the last zone to board. I don't care what zone I am. I really don't care. I walk on the plane. I don't need to stop and gather around with a group of people around the, uh, you know, the gate there. Walk on the plane. They close the door. We take off. That's my perfect scenario. Now, Eric likes to get to the airport very early and likes to have some time to sit around. It makes me crazy. So we we often get in um, discussions, so to speak, about what time to leave for the airport. Uh, Aaron, let me hear from you. What is your perfect scenario in an airport? Is that anything I agree close to mind? You. Yeah. I completely agree with you. The only caveat is that if you have a bag and then they want to take your bag, that can be a real bummer. Yeah. Especially if you travel to liberal cities like Philadelphia, a baggage claim can take three hours. So the only caveat is if you're worried about not getting your bag on. But sure. I like to get there last minute and be the last one on. My husband likes to check a bag, which we also have. <gasps> He's checking bags? Always. And and when we go through security, he doesn't have TSA. So I'm in TSA oh my gosh. And clear. So to mitigate the argument sometimes we travel separately stop it that's yeah. amazing i'll meet you at the airport 
Okay, yes. now now my answer. So Go listen, ahead. this this I am an American Express Platinum card holder. I'm sure you yeah. guys have much bigger cards. What I'm saying is this gives you access to the American <laughs> Express Lounge. I'll go to the freaking airport, Laura, five hours early just to get the free buffet, just to sit there. I'm saying I love I'm, – I'm all about – I get there. I To make it worth it. Early, just to make it worth it, just so I can get all the fees of my American wow. Express. So, no, but, yeah, I'm I'm uh, anal retentive. I'm like Eric. I get to the airport early. I don't want to miss a flight. Uh, yeah, I'll just sit there yeah. and twiddle my thumbs before I even know. Like, like this is the thing. This this is what I do. And, and I've noticed this, and I've heard other people say, like, when people are in a hurry, you know, to the airport, I'll always let them go. But, like, I hate having that stress. I hate when I see another person, and they're worried they're going to make it. I never. That's, like, my I biggest love it. fear. I yeah, literally, I, I live for that. Maybe there's something wrong with me. I live for that. I'm like, Dang. how close can I cut this to, to barely make it to my flight? Because as far as I'm concerned, I don't get a lot of downtime. I need to maximize the time I have. If I'm sitting in an airport and just waiting to board I a flight, it. I have I failed. I've ultimately <laughs> failed at whatever. Like it's just over for me. And it happened to us. We had a very early flight the other morning, and I told Eric the night before I was like, uh, if this is the time you want to leave, I will leave at that time. But I will tell you, I won't say anything to you. But if we're sitting down before it is time to board the plane, just know what I'll be thinking. <laughs> He knew what I was thinking because it happened. We got there way too early. I did get a coffee, so I mean, I guess I can't argue with that. But I think you're one or the other, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, Aaron. I'm not surprised. Alex, I guess I'm not surprised either. I hope yeah. is the food that good at the at the Amex? No, no, oh. it's not that good. I'm just saying. I'm just a, you know, I'm just a snob or whatever. Uh, uh, you know, I have to get uh, all anything that's quote unquote free. I have to take advantage of. But one thing I think we can all agree on, though. Is that airport and traveling now stinks? It's just, oh, it's misery. It's just misery, and I used to love traveling. And I still obviously travel a lot, but it's just it's lost all the fun and excitement. Oh, yeah. Now it's like a it's like a prison, almost like I'm in a prison bus flying somewhere. It's really yeah. lost. Well, even look at even look at the difference, and I know we got to go in a second. The difference in how people dress when they go to the airport. If you look back like 50 years ago, people were actually like dressing up to go on an airplane and like trying to look their best. These days, like we're lucky if people are out of pajamas. Like yeah. people just don't even care. Just, just, Laura, wait, can I give my two my two, my two pet peeves? peeves on yeah, Amazon? please go ahead. First of all, women with nicely pedicured feet—that's one thing. Men should never wear a tank top anywhere, oh. anywhere. Specifically, Maybe not the gym. on an airplane. Maybe the they gym. Lift their yeah. arm Laura up probably see... wears a tank top to the gym. We can wear one to the gym. No, no, okay. no gym. Okay, no, no gym love. And then they lift up their arm to put their bag, and you see all the oh. armpit here. Yeah. For true. some women these days, too. It depends. It depends, you know, what's going and on. And then with the men in the sandals with their, like, nasty, un like, socks and men. Socks, shoes, pants, shirt. <laughs> yeah, but, Aaron, in Florida, more people have shirtless shirts and sandals on than closed-toed shoes. And I'm talking about the airport. You're not going yeah. to the beach okay, bar. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I for me, there there are so many issues on a plane. But it, as far as I'm concerned, just keep your yourself out of my space, and I'll stay out of your space, and just be respectful <laughs> and nice. It shouldn't be that hard. Help somebody if they're having a hard time lifting up their bag. You know, people get really upset. I think sometimes, like Eric and I, will help people. You know, who clearly are not on our side of the aisle with their bag or something, and then after the fact, they'll realize like who we are. <sighs> And I think they're horrified that they even dared to let us touch their bag. And we were nice. And they liked us for a second. It just pains them so much to have had that interaction. But I digress. Um, I feel like there, uh, I always say this, there's so much more we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Portland. Alex, we got to have you back to talk about that. I know you've had some run-ins there because um, it's a disaster over there in Portland. But uh, that's all the time we have for today on The Right View. So I want to say thank you to Aaron. Thank you to Alex. We'll have you both back. This was a hoot, guys. Thanks so much for so coming fun. on. Thank you. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. Prime time. Wait, wait. Do we have time to have Primetime 99 do a rap for us oh, really quick? Oh, yes. Okay. Hurry. Laura Go. Trump is the best. I'm with Aaron, and I got my bulletproof vest. If you see me, <laughs> you're gonna miss. I don't really care because I'm like uh, Donald Trump, but from Wish. All right, I'm Primetime 99. I'm on the side. You Prime guys are the Prime best. Prime. Oh my God, thank you. We'll see you back here next time for more.
At The Right View, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we are independent. We get to say everything that we think and everything that we feel. We have no woke companies guiding us or telling us what we can and cannot say. We are always going to shoot you straight and give you the facts as we know them. And that's why it's important to support independent uh, outlets like The Right View. My name is Lara Trump, and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. Um, I love my pillow because not only are my pillows made in the USA by American workers, uh, but they're great products and they're so great that not only do I use them in my own bed at night, my children actually requested, my daughter the other day went to the closet and pulled out a my pillow and said this is the pillow that i want to sleep with and i gotta tell you she loves it and will have nothing to do with any other pillow so it's a big hit around our house my dogs also uh happen to sleep on my pillow dog beds so all around the trump household we're big fans if you go to mypillow.com today and use promo code trump again promo code trump you will not only save money, but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of America. Inflation has impacted all of our lives. I don't think anyone can go to the gas pump or the grocery store without noticing that it is a major factor. And unfortunately, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem like it's going down in the way that we would like it to. And one way to protect your money is by investing in precious metals, uh, gold and silver. That's always been a great way to make sure that you keep your money and you keep it safe. When you go to bh-pm.com, use promo code TRUMP. That way, if you decide you want to invest in gold and silver, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. We live in a time that's very interesting. Uh, a lot of us out there feel like a lot of our rights are slipping away. And if you're like I am and you want to have the right to choose whether or not to have a vaccine, how to live your life freely, and you're looking for a great doctor, I've heard amazing things about Dr. Sherwood. He's somebody who you should really check out and check into, um, and it'll help support this program and keep us going. So go to Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. Again, Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. You can save yourself some money and help us keep our program going. Ladies and gentlemen, this just in. We'll keep this a little secret between you and me and them and everybody. Whoa. The people that are actually at the tip of the spear, working directly with President Trump on a day-to-day -day basis to save this nation, they're all joining us on the Reawaken America tour. We have Pre President Donald J. Trump's Chief of Staff, Akash Patel. We've got Peter Navarro's joined us on the tour. We have General Michael Flynn. We have Eric Trump. The people actually working at the tip of the spear with President Donald J. Trump to save America are joining us on the Reawaken America tour. Whoa. If word of this gets out, if the truth about election fraud, medical fraud, religious fraud, monetary fraud, and mainstream media gets out, it may just save the nation. The Reawaken tour is coming to our place, hallelujah. It's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. Yeah, it's going to be lit. Wide slam open. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on May 12th and 13th, the Reawaken America Tour is coming to Miami, Florida, and to the beautiful Trump Doral Resort and Golf Course. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the Reawaken America Tour is coming to Miami, Florida on May 12th and 13th. Get your sunscreen ready because General Flynn, Mike Lindell, Amanda Grace, Julie Green, Pastor Dave Scarlett, Dr. Judy Mikevitz, Cash Patel, and Team America are taking the Reawaken America Tour to Trump Doral on May 12th and 13th. And then we're taking the God-fearing review Revival starting Reawaken America Tour into Sin City. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are taking the God-fearing Reawaken America Tour to Las Vegas, Nevada on August 25th and 26th. General Flynn and Team America will be taking the Reawaken America Tour to Las Vegas, Nevada. And the Patriots will be staying together at Trump International Hotel Las Vegas, located at 2000 Fashion Show Drive, Las Vegas, Nevada, with zip code 89109 if you want to send them a letter. And yes, Alex Jones will be live and in person at the Reawaken America Tour, Las Vegas, Nevada. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, put it on your calendar. Get those tickets right now. August 25th and 26th, Eric Trump, Dr. 
Peter McCullough, Mel K, Dr. Stella Emanuel, Owen Troyer, Alex Jones, Seth Holhouse, Pastor Mark Burns, Pastor Leon Benjamin. We're all taking the Reawaken America tour to Las Vegas, Nevada, ladies and gentlemen. Las Vegas, Nevada. And that's going to be August 25th and 26th. Thus far on the Reawaken America tour, we've featured Dr. Dave Martin, the late great Dr. Vladimir Zelenko, Charlie Kirk, Donna Clement Petruska, Sean Foyt, Karen Kingston, Chad Prather, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Dr. Alan Keyes, Mickey Willis, Roger Stone, Dr. Richard Bartlett, and hundreds of patriotic speakers that you know, including Del Bigtree, Thomas Renz, Sidney Powell, Jim Caviezel, Donald J. Trump Jr., Peter Navarro, Klaus Schwab, Yuval Noah Harari, Bill Gates, and the godless globalists have their annual meeting called the World Economic Forum at Davos. But we that reject the Great Reset have the Reawaken America Tour coming to Miami, Florida, and coming to Los Vegas, Nevada. Get those tickets at time2freeamerica.com. That's time2freeamerica.com. We have scholarship pricing to make these events affordable for everybody. Every Reawaken America Tour event has sold out, so request those tickets today at time2freeamerica.com. That's time2freeamerica.com. Or for faster service, you can send me a personal text to 918-851-0102. It's 918-851-0102. And to be bilingually sensitive, that's 918-851-0102. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. We will shut you down, we will cite you, and if we need to, we will arrest you and we will take you to jail. Period. I wasn't thinking of the Bill of Rights when we did this. But no amendment, no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. God actually spoke to me. He spoke about sacredness. He said to me, Kim, what I place in many, many people is sacred. And if anybody touches what is sacred to me, then it is the end for them. So what I've done in the United States of America is sacred. And there are people on every side that are trying to destroy what I deem sacred. And it's not going to happen. This is the definition of criminal conspiracy, racketeering, and collusion. This is not a theory, this is evidence. Because I have upheld this country to spread the light to the rest of the world. When you choose to go against the sacred thing that God puts into the very heart and the soil of this nation, this was sacred to God. Now is the time to act. This is exactly why I need some action for my people. Hello, everybody. It's an honor to be with you.